Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Native news and information, I'm Jeannie Green. Hello to our good friends everywhere. So nice to have you with us. Our youth are so very important, no matter what culture they're from, for they are the future. And today we visit with the youth and see the traditions that are being handed down from our native elders. It's one of our most important shows. I'll be back with Alaska youth and some exciting traditions right after this. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Coastal Villages Region Fund. Thank you, CVRF, for your support of Heartbeat Alaska. And Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Airlines. Thank you, Frontier Airlines, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. It's a nine-letter word that encompasses everything. And from the time we're born, this word is like a link from our past to who we are today, to who we're going to be tomorrow. It's defined by Webster's as the handing down of information, beliefs, and customs by word of mouth or by example from one generation to another without written instructions. For the native people of Alaska, it's a way of life, a way of assuring that our culture will live on forever. its tradition, and the unique way of life that separates Alaska's people from the rest of the world. Whether it be the lessons of survival or the legends and stories told through song and dance, the ways of our ancestors still live on in the ways of our people today. It's the uncompromised dedication of our elders to teach these ways and the unquenchable desire of our youth to learn their history that make the passing down of tradition possible. In Savunga, Alaska, the youth display an undeniable pride on the dance floor as they paint the pictures of stories from yesteryear. Located on the north coast of St. Lawrence Island, the Siberian Yupiks of Savunga are closely tied to the earth. They rely heavily upon the Bering Sea to provide most of their food. This is a uh, dried uh, ogruk meat, mukluk, bearded seal. Good? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Delicacy. Not only do they harvest seal, walrus, whale, and fish, but the nearby cliffs provide a nesting ground for the mirror and the eggs that these sea-dwelling birds lay. In the neighboring village of Gamble, the only other village on the island, 
we find some locals stretching a walrus skin that will eventually be used to cover an umiak frame or skin boat. You're gonna tie it all from here to there, all around. No, actually this part's gonna be spliced and cut in half, just like this one's almost done. It's drying off right now. By stretching the walrus skin, the fur lining can be easily separated from the actual skin. Some parts are coming out and some parts are hard. Eventually, the skin will look like this one when it dries. For Sam Oktokiak, the day will come when he will have to stretch a walrus skin and cover his own umiak. It's through watching, listening, and learning this tradition that Sam will be prepared for that day. It's also through the passing down of tradition that Sam has learned how to carve ivory. Throughout the coastal communities of Alaska can be found some of the greatest ivory carvers in the world. Edwin Nungok of Savunga is one of those carvers that has built an outstanding reputation for himself through his artwork. I like the idea of using my culture in the artwork because it, it um, helps recognize who I am and, and where I come from. I have started when I was younger at school. I took some classes with Alexander Akia. And um, when I traveled over to Gamble and I'd run into Ron carving, it inspired me to carve something too. And, and I remember back when he asked me to carve a piece and uh, I didn't know how to carve it and he'd get me started on that and I'd ended up finishing it. And I, I came back and carved five more the same way and kind of picked up from there. And I tried doing different things um, when I'm working on, when, when I was first working on some human figures and I thought I wouldn't do any faces, you know, and then I, I just grind it down anyways and carve it up a little bit and then face would start to show and as you're going it's, it would be finished. I'm doing an artwork about, um, I'm thinking of titling it, uh, Respect from a Hunter. And um, it's going to be a lifting of an um, elderly face. And it's going to be something about the lifting of a soul, uh, something more in a respecting way. Um, our elders tell us about uh, respect for the other animals that we hunt. and So I thought I'd do some artwork about that. I carved the bear at the tip of the tusk right here and then kind of twists up into a walrus and then a whale kind of twisted tail right there. And um, this is gonna be a bearded seal. It kind of goes around the waist of the man that I'm gonna be carving. And it's gonna be stretched out as to where it's lifting an elderly face and I'll, I'll carve up uh, um, a young man's face right there and kind of make this more more of an elderly face where it has a rough there. And so it's kind of going to show a little, it's going to represent a story of lifting of the soul of an elderly man and which it's going to show the respect for the animals. With the harvesting of the walrus, the hunter also takes the tusks of the great mammal. I'm going to be carving a whale on this side and probably a bear or something else on the other side. And he kind of liked the idea of having it out. And once I get it in there, it's going to be a nice looking tusk, but um, yeah, these are male tusks. You can notice by the thickness and the length, and it's an adult male tusk, this one. And you could notice the difference between the female and the male by the thickness. And usually a bull 
is a lot bigger than female. When these tusks are carved into artwork, they can bring a high price in today's market. Sam is well on his way to joining the ranks of Master Carver. Thanks to those who taught Sam what he knows about carving and the dedication of the young people of rural Alaska. Like Sam, Akdokiak, this tradition will be carried on into the future. Traditions are so very important. Traditional holidays, the traditions within your family, within your society, within your culture. I was raised with many native traditions, thanks to my parents. It's an important, important thing. It's who we are. We'll be right back with Heartbeat Alaska and more traditions right after this. Turn it up! For generations, the Chupik Eskimos of Nunavak Island have maintained the finest herd of reindeer anywhere in the world. The flavor and nutrition of these magnificent free-range deer is unmatched and is now available in commercial USDA-inspected lots. This is the only official outlet for authentic Nunavak reindeer meat. For more information or to place an order, contact Nunavak Reindeer and Seafood Products, Box 42, Macquarie, Alaska, 99630, or call 907-827-8015. Supplies are limited. It's hard beat, Alaska. It's hard beat, Alaska. Hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for genius show. It's the alley the Indian and the summer months, the native people of Alaska spend much of their time at what is fondly known as fish camp. On the Koyukuk River, Hudson Sam and his family are keeping with tradition, fishing for their winter supply of salmon. From the setting of the net to the jarring of the fish, it's a summer-long lesson for the youth of Muslia, a lesson that has been passed on for generations. On this set, Hudson and his crew caught 98 chum salmon that will be used to feed his family and his dogs throughout the winter. <laughs> and although it looks like a lot of hard work, the real hard work is yet to come. As Hudson cuts the fish, two young ladies watch with curious eyes, waiting for their turn to try their hand at this age-old tradition. Okay, what the hell do you do? Okay, wait, move your hands over. Okay, what do we do with the head? Haley and Courtney go. Whoa, look how bloody it is. I can't cut the bone. <laughs> As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. From the cutting table, these fish make their way to Selena Sam, where she hangs them to dry. The preparation and storage of these fish is another valuable skill for these youth to know. Then you just make your mark, yeah. and then you go again, and then you just cut it right there, and you cut it in half. Through hands-on experience, these kids are not only learning the ways of their people, but are experiencing it as well. Okay, these are too big. Look. It's the dedication of the elders and adults of our communities that makes the passing down of tradition possible, but just as important. It takes the desire of our youth to learn these ways. In Selawik, Alaska, there is no lack of interest among these kids as they watch Norma Ballot carve mastodon ivory. If you have any scratches on it, this is when it'll show up. <laughs> Selawik and the surrounding area is believed to be the area where thousands of mastodon crossed the tundra tens of thousands of years ago. 
Today, discoveries of mastodon tusks, many still intact, are being found. For the future carvers of Selawik, it's a unique medium that holds a fantastic history. And fortunately for these youth, it can be found right in their own backyard. For Norma, passing this tradition on is something she loves to do. In fact, Norma teaches a carving class at the local school. So you'd be amazed at how much you could actually make from uh, just a simple piece like this, for instance. That one could probably go for $600 once I'm done with it. So You just got to be interested in it. And uh, through trial and error, you'll eventually become uh, professional. Over the years from working with Ivory, one thing I found out is that um, I'll, I'll leave some parts of it raw, like for this, for, uh, for instance, this is going to be a bracelet. On Kodiak Island, you won't find very many ivory carvers, but you will find a community that wears its pride well. <laughs> on the southeast coast of the island, on the shores of the Sitgalitic Straits, sit the community of Old Harbor, home to the Aleutic people of Kodiak Island. Over the last few years, the village has seen a growing interest within the youth, an interest to know more about their history, about their culture, and about their dance. We started out with a group of five kids, and I tried to get kids to join, but they were kind of shy because they were like, oh, I don't want to wear that, or I don't want to dance because people might laugh at us. Well, the group that I started out with, I told them we're not doing it for people, we're not doing it, we're doing it for ourselves, we're doing it for our parents, and we're doing it for our culture because that's, you know, this is our pride, and this is the way we show people how proud we are of our culture here in the village. <laughs> When they started teaching them to dancing, they had to learn the words first and what they meant and learn what the, um, the meanings of the hand movements and everything meant. We'll sing it in Aleut, English, and then Aleut. The next song we're going to do is the Bashful Eyes. And this Bashful Eyes means it's an old traditional story where this chief from the village, you know, back then they said, okay, you're my daughter, you're going to marry this certain person from another village. Well, she was in love with another man. So Bashful Eyes is, she's hiding her eyes on the beach when the other dad is bringing her new husband to be, because they were chosen for you, you didn't have any choice. And she's hiding her eyes, and that's what Bashful Eyes is. We're very proud of who we are and I'd love to show you the regalia. The top part that you see is the headpiece for a traditional native woman and these symbols, the more beads you had, you were the more wealthy you were. And the traditional way, the Aleutic way is your eyes are covered. Women were never allowed to look up. Your eyes had to be covered. You always had to look down. And the, like I said, the, this, let's say this headpiece, that would be a chief's wife because of all the design. They'd trade beads, they'd get um, the birds, everything would be handmade. Everything would be traditional, made out of seal, um, sinew, ivory, whale, and the bird's beaks. But this is a traditional alley headpiece. And the regalia this, that she is wearing right now is a traditional woman's regalia. And the same meaning with the headpiece, the more beads, the more ivory, the more decorations you had, the wealthier you were. Made out of rabbit, fox, weasel. And the drums we have were made out of seal hide and the bark of the trees. 
and the strings would be made out of sinew. So everything was all natural. Nothing was wasted. The kids are real interested in it. And there's one thing that we push. It's not, they're not here to get paid for it. They're here because, like I said, for their pride, for their parents, and to honor our culture. Each week, Heartbeat Alaska brings you great stories from all over the state. And we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. Say hi from Nooksack. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. It's about not doing drugs. It's about knowing where you've come from. What you do. And who you are. It's about not doing drugs. Let's see, we've taken a look at Native artwork, Native tradition, Native dancing. What's missing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> For these young ladies from Hoosley, Alaska, it's about the Native tradition of fun. These girls are running Tim Pavlik's dogs around Six Mile Track. It's a part of their heritage that they will someday pass down. Right now, Nadia and the kids are going to get the food ready to feed the dogs. This is a blend of dog food, oils, and bone meal. They're going to mix it until the food's really mixed up nice. Um, the kids here are helping me out with the dogs like they usually do. They've been looking forward to running them all summer long. They um, help me feed the dogs all summer, clean the yard, water them. They enjoyed a lot. Sometimes I have a, I had a four-wheeler to hook up my dogs, and I had a four-wheeler behind us, and um, both are packed. And we can't forget the age-old tradition of hooky bobbin. It almost looks like a 